the Cougars have left the Palouse for the big city. That's right, tonight's Apple Cup of Poops is in Seattle, Washington, home of the University of Washington Huskies, hosting their arch rivals. Cougars snapped a four-game losing streak with a win over Oregon State last weekend. Huskies, meantime, with an opportunity to get their first three-game win streak of the season. With Elise Woodward, I'm Kara Capuano. We are taking this win in. Now, in that sweep last weekend against Oregon, a pretty scary moment for Washington as they watched their leading scorer, Kayla Burt, go down and go down hard. Well, and she took a shot directly to her nose in that game versus Oregon. Broke her nose. She could not come back into that game. She had to wait Monday and go get it placed by a physician. She's okay now. She has a mask. She actually got a personal mask made to fit her face that arrived yesterday. She practiced with it. She said it feels much better than the other masks. So she's ready to go. She said she has no problem right now breathing through that nose. And I tell you what, she's tough. There's no question with that defibrillator in her chest, you knew Kayla could play through some pain. Yeah, a broken nose is really nothing Not for Kayla Burt. And by the way, Lee, she'll be in the starting lineup tonight because little star spark plug Dominique Banks suffered a concussion earlier this week. The big matchup that we're going to be watching, however, is not out on the perimeter where Burt plays, but rather down low. Well, the two big stars for each team, in my opinion, especially on the boards right here, Jill Bell and Kate Vince. They both lead their team on the boards and are both two of the leading scorers for their team. They won't necessarily guard each other all that much, but weak side defense, they're going to be around each other a lot. By the end of this game, they'll be well acquainted, should we say, to the least. So I think who can dominate the rebounds and who can score on the post with more accuracy, more frequency, that'll tell the tale to this game. It is always scrappy and physical when the rivals play, and we expect more of the same tonight from this Pac-10 matchup as the Huskies try to make it 20 in a row against their in-state rivals. Come on back for the tip. Ah, the rivalry always brings the fans out in heavy numbers, and that's what we're seeing tonight at Bank of America Arena in Seattle, Washington, as the Cougars and Huskies get ready to square off for the second time this season. Oh, got a little loud there, I think, for that young youngster. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Cougars. A couple of junior college transfers making a big impact this year, including center Keisha Moore, at least. Well, Keisha Moore was not eligible to play until mid-December, a transfer from the University of Idaho. So she's getting some time coming in and really has played well, moved all the way up to second on the team in rebounding. A couple of star sophomores in Ferguson and Benz to watch. And Sherry Merle, it has been a rocky road in the Palouse, but she is staying with it. Well, she had a chance to leave in the offseason to go to another program that was courting her services, and she turned them down. She says she is building something here in Washington State. She loves the family atmosphere over in Pullman, and she said she just couldn't walk away from all these kids that she's now recruited. What are the keys to the game for the Cougars as they take on the Huskies? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Right now, let's take a look at the Husky starting lineup. We mentioned in the introduction, Kayla Burt coming back into the starting lineup. This is the seventh different starting lineup that June Doherty has used this year, the only constant has been number 33, Kristen O'Neill. Well, and Washington really started playing their best basketball when June Doherty fixed the lineup and she put Jill Bell in there permanently along with Dominique Banks. That was down at Oregon about a month and a half ago. This is the first time she's had to alter that lineup and obviously due to an injury, Dominique Banks with a concussion in practice this week. So we're gonna see how Kayla Burt responds. She's played really well off the bench in double figures six of the last nine games. But this is a player, obviously, that knows how to start as well. And as I was mentioning, the keys to the game, Elise. Well, I don't think there's any question. If the Washington State Cougars want to be in this game, they have to slow down Emily Florence in transition, one of the fastest point guards in the league. And they have to finish down low. They have to make shots. And Washington wants to push that tempo. And the tip goes to the Crimson and Gray. That's Washington State in their visiting uniforms. And the Huskies have gone with gold with purple piping. Cougars trying to work it down low, and Bell promptly robs it. 
Emily Florence showing a little drive and dish, and it works wonders. Bell gets on the board for Utah. Well, I tell you what, Washington played so well last week. A sweep against the Oregon schools at home. Not just a sweep, they just crushed their two opponents from Oregon by over 20 points per game. And uh, they are playing their best basketball of the season right now. Yeah, averaging 82 and a half points per game last week. And I mean, just scoring with absolute authority. We have a travel call down low on Keisha Moore. Turnovers have been trouble for Washington State. They're averaging almost 19 a game. And talking to June Doherty before the game, coach for the Washington Huskies, forcing turnovers one of the keys. They play a unique defense in the Pac-10. It is a matchup zone, and it's really started to mold together. With the mask on, Kayla Burt a little off the mark on her first three-point attempt. Looking down low for Benz. Benz and Moore playing a little double post. High-low action, didn't work for him there. Here's your transition basketball that you were talking about. The Huskies run and gun so fluidly. Well, position by position, especially with Jill Bell at your center, Washington, one of the fastest teams in this league. They're one of the smallest, though, so Washington State has a chance to get them on the boards with Keisha Moore and Kate Bentz down low. But if Washington can push that tempo, that's what you want to see. June Doherty wants to see the high tempo, the fast pace, and Sherry Merle wants to see that slow down, physical game down low. Jessica Perry. Called for a travel. Made a pretty move in the paint, but she couldn't get the pass off before she landed. And right now, I think you're seeing a bit of a nerves or just not ready to get go from the start from Washington State. Two turnovers in a row. They're playing in front of a lot of fans here over on this side of the mountains. And this rivalry game, it's been 19 in a row for Washington. So the Cougars know coming in here, it's difficult to get a win. And that's got to mean a lot for a player like Jess Perry, the senior for Washington State that we just saw commit the turnover. This is her last opportunity to try to get the best of these Huskies. Cameo Hicks has been the best Husky of late. She had a phenomenal weekend against Oregon. 13 points, nine rebounds against Oregon State. 14 points, eight rebounds against the Ducks. She was an absolute force in that successful weekend last weekend. Well, and you look at her and she's only five foot nine, and yet she's one of the best rebounders for this Husky team. And she can get out and run the floor. You see her there, the lefty going with her right hand, strong to the basket, proven her versatility, and guess who's leading the way? The freshman out of Boise, Idaho, Emily Florence, who from coast to coast, one of the fastest players in this league, and she's really done a good job improving this year at making decisions and pushing that tempo. She has to be the one in charge of this team and making sure when they run, they have a good chance of winning, but when they slow it down, Washington just not big enough to compete many times in that half-court game. Picks the leading scorer and rebounder for the Huskies in the last two games and should point out, at least we saw her before the game, she had one of her feet in one of those kind of rehab boots. As a matter of fact, number 33 for Washington, Kristen O'Neill, wearing a similar apparatus. This is the time of year in the Pac-10 season when players are banged up and gutting it out. Well, there's a lot of players for Washington banged up, both dealing with stress conditions in their feet. There's one right there, Kayla Burt banged up. She's got the mask to prove it. She steals, but then has her pocket picked by Adrian Ferguson. The Cougars right now offensively, just little movement. They're all standing around the perimeter. Nice defense by the Huskies. Three in the key called on Keisha Moore. Coach Merle has to be a little bit disappointed, as you were saying, with the offensive possession so far for the Cougs. Uh, and Washington's matchup zone is a difficult thing to get a ha to get the hang of and get into a rhythm against right on where the openings are. Hicks used a little bit too movement, too much movement in her pivot foot there. She tried to make a little post move on her defender. She's been really scoring early. She's been trying to set the tempo for this offense. It worked very well against the Oregon schools, and she's got four of her team six right now. Well, she's somebody that right out of the gate, she wants to run. And if you're not prepared coming in here to Heck Edmondson Pavilion, she's going to score a lot of points early. Charmaine Jones, much smaller than Kayla Burt. 5'6 against 5'11 drives, and Burt reaches in for the foul, her first.
Charmaine Jones launches from the top of the key. There's the Pac-10's leading rebounder, Kate Benz, fouled on the putback attempt as she streaks in for the offensive board. And pretty amazing with Kate Benz that she is the leading rebounder in the pack, and she's only six foot one. There are a lot of bigger, taller players out there, stronger, but I don't think there's anyone out there that works harder than Kate Benz. She's constantly trying to find an opening. Even if she gets boxed out, she doesn't give up. She continues to work through that contact to get to the boards. That's why she's the leader in the Pac-10. And if she can hang on and win that crown, she'll be the first Cougar to ever do so. That's quite an honor from Washington State. And an unbelievable honor, considering she's only a sophomore. We still have two more years to see her battle down low. And she averaged almost seven per game last year as a freshman. Got a lot of time. She's at, out of Central Catholic in the Portland area. And so it's not that far from home. A Northwest kids sticking around, going to Washington State. And I think she's feeling a lot more comfortable this year. And who knows what she'll feel like in the next couple of years. I'm sure she's going to feel even more comfortable and be willing to do a lot or be able to do even more. We see the Cougars defense stepping up in this possession. Shot clock under 10. No problem for Jill Bell, who was so fluid and smooth on that little baseline turnaround. And June Doherty said before the game that Jill Bell really looked good this week in practice. The long week, no game Thursday in rivalry week here in the state of Washington. She, she was able to rest a little bit, get her legs back under her, and was one of the best athletes in the conference. Uh, they're hoping it pays dividends here today. We're talking about the slow start for the Cougs on their first six offensive possessions. Washington State 0 for 3 from the floor five turnovers they did make the two free throws courtesy of Benz and finally Adrian Ferguson gets the Cougs first bucket of the game and Adrian Ferguson really played well over in Pullman when these two teams matched up a month and a half ago uh, played well hit some long shots and threes in the first half to open things up Cougars in that game lost by just seven points to Washington Benz gets a hand on that ball it will be the Huskies ball when we come back and Jill Bell and Cameo Hicks have all eight of Washington points so far Eleven of Washington State's 24 games this season have been decided by eight or less. They're coming close, and teams are taking notice. Um, I think coaches have said, Sherry, we're having to, you know, we're having to definitely play to win. You know, I think uh, I think people don't take us for granted. I know coaches don't, um, you know, because they're always getting ready, but they're they're preparing our teams, the teams better. And you know, I think I think kids on the other teams look at the scores and the wow, you know, why is Washington State getting so close? These aren't your Cougs, at least the ones that you used to face back when you wore Husky purple and gold. Actually, the Cougars back in my time were very good. Uh, it's in the recent, I'd say in the five years recently where they've had their struggles trying to get out of the cellar of the Pac-10. And they finally did with the win against Oregon State last week. This team is now in ninth place. And while that may not seem like a great accomplishment to many, if you've been in the cellar for four years in a row, it means a lot to this program. They're making strides they're only losing games by seven points per game now as opposed to 20 over 20 when sherry Moore arrives so this team is getting better even if it doesn't reflect it so much in that win loss column shot clock down to three stephanie singer stymied by jill bell a block on the baseline showing you why bell is sixth in the conference and leads this team now with 28 blocks and she can just get off the floor so quickly. Even if it looks like you might be able to get a shot off against her, she can get off the ground so quickly and so high. One of the best athletes in this conference. It's difficult to get a shot off. Little pick and roll with Kayla Burt. Jill Bell is firing away. Three of three now from the floor. She's got six. Well, June Doherty mentioned it. She knew it. She had a premonition that Jill Bell was going to play well today. And so far, so good for her. Well, Jill Bell with her second career double-double. The last time these two met, 
teams met in Pullman. She had 15 and 13 in that game. And she's bringing the thunder tonight. Washington State continues to struggle finding its rhythm. Keisha Moore called for an offensive foul on that last possession. And six turnovers for the Cougars in less than six minutes of action. And anytime that happens, I think Washington State probably feels lucky to only be down six right now. They just have not been able to get anything going on the offensive end. I seem to remember a similar start when these two teams met in Pullman, where at the very beginning of the game, Cougars were a little slow, lots of turnovers. Meantime, June Doherty's brought in the reserves already, and Breanne Watson making her look good. She has been a scoring machine lately, double figure scoring in six of the last eight games, and she comes off the bench. Well, she started most of the season last year and really played good minutes and just hadn't got into a rhythm until about a month ago. And then all of a sudden something clicked in. She got out of that sophomore slump. Kate Benz with the baseline, Jay, as the Huskies lead is cut in half. Nicole Castro seeing some early minutes in this one, number 15 for Washington. Bet out she had a good week. Out of Australia, she's getting a lot more time because, ooh, nice shot by Emily Florence. She doesn't make a lot from there. She's under 30% on the year from three-point range, but you gotta love that whenever she's open, she's letting it fly. Well, that's something that as a freshman point guard, that will improve with time. She's been working a lot with that shot doctor, Mike Doherty, who likes to tinker with everybody's shot when they get into Washington and, and improve their game. And so far, it's worked. She's really looked a lot smoother with her release recently. And there's the shot doctor there. Also in his ninth year with the program, like his wife, head coach Jim Doherty. Hang loose, baby. I don't think that's what he was really saying there. I'm sure he was going to play. <laughs> oh, Mike's always hanging loose. He is. One of the coolest cats around. Florence trying to create a little space for herself. Kicks it out. Cameo Hicks does the work. Oh, just in and out. Charmaine Jones on the run, miscommunication with Moore, another Cougar turnover. Make that eight for Washington State. And that time, I think, just a little bit out of control for Jones getting into the paint. Lucky, really, not to draw the offensive foul. Trying to make something happen. You can see why they have not been very consistent in that half-court game yet, so trying to push the tempo just cannot connect. Jones will take a breather, as will Cameo Hicks for Washington. Maggie O'Hara and Cherie Craddock in the lineup now. June Doherty with that crazy hockey style substitution pattern. Always keeps you guessing when you're a fan. You never know who you're gonna see down there on the floor for the Huskies. It must be such an asset to have such a deep bench. Well, we mentioned it too a little bit earlier, Nicole Castro getting more time because Dominique Banks, who has started and been so good, the freshman had a concussion this week in practice, bonked heads with Maggie O'Hara and is not going to see any time here today. Florence off the mark, but she resets the shot clock. clock. You see the shot by O'Hara, and she gets on the board on her first field goal attempt. And as you mentioned, bonked heads, as you see there, over her right eyebrow, she's got the little butterfly bandage. That was her resulting injury from bonking with Banks. Ariana Scale can't get the reverse to go for Washington State. Husky ball. Foul called on Kate Benz, her first. Feel a little frustration from the Cougars. A couple of offensive fouls, a lot of turnovers, up to eight now. Three in the key. Just not really finding a rhythm early on. Very different from the team we saw beat Oregon State last weekend. Castro fouled on the way to the basket. Looked like she was getting ready to pass. And right now, it is the Huskies in command looking for their first three-game win streak of the season, getting scoring from tons of players.
doesn't get much better than perfect, and that's what Jill Bell has been for the Huskies as they are shooting 61 and a half percent, contributing to their 11-point lead, Elise. Well, and she deserves a little rest on the bench, really playing hard. One of the best athletes in the conference. You can see her get up right there, a state champion in the long jump as a youngster in high school, also ninth in the world in the youth games as a long jumper. So this is an outstanding athlete, really choosing and choosing the sport well in basketball instead of track and has really come on really improved as she's gotten older. Just a sophomore, she redshirted her first year in the program. She had some thumb problems that first year. Good decision to wait. Patience has paid off for her. Kate Benz tries to get a shot to fall from outside, not usually where she's taken her Jays. Emily Florence called on the rebound for a foul. She'll take a break as Kristen O'Neill, the most versatile player in the Huskies roster, steps in. She'll run the point, she'll play a little power forward for you. Number 33 does everything for you, Dub. Jessica Perry with her first basket of the game over O'Neill. It was a three. The lead still 10 points for UW. And Jessica Perry, not known as a scorer, really more of an assist maker. Seventh all time in Washington State history. You know, that time showing she can knock something down as well. Sheree Craddock can knock something down. She proves time and time again. That's why they call her Machine Gun. She's ninth in the conference in three point percentage. And she's never seen a shot that she does not like. Sheree Craddock is in there to score and score in bunches. Perfect off the bench to add a spark. Yeah, you set a screen for her and it's good night, Marie. That shot is going up. She's shooting 38% from three point range this season. Tremendous percentage from downtown. Maggie O'Hara dropped in the middle of the key as Kate Benz was taking that shot. No basket for Washington State. Instead, it's Perry called for an offensive foul. A lot of offensive fouls on the Cougars in this one. I think that Washington State just trying to make something happen. Getting into the paint, Jessica Perry doing exactly what Sherry Merle wants her to do. Dribble penetration into the middle of the key, draw the defense, and then kick. The only problem is, is that Maggie O'Hara saw and anticipated what Perry was gonna do and slid over there. It's the right decision you just want to pull up a little bit sooner and not create that contact. Nine turnovers for the Cougars has resulted in eight points for Washington. There's Craddock again, firing and hitting. She is so fun to watch. Well, there is no hesitation. She's really been bothered by ankle problems, has missed a couple games, the flu, just battled through it though, and nice to see her hit her, two, her first two shots here for the dogs, maybe get her back on track. Washington's lead now 25 to 9 halfway first through this first frame. Baseline jumper falls for Charmaine Jones, her first basket of the game. The only junior returning with the program this year. There were a couple of juniors that transferred in, but Jones has been a coup her whole career. And Jones, a huge game down at USC, 26 points. I'll tell you what, these Huskies are drilling right now. They are four of six from three-point range, 12 of 17 from the field, shooting over 70%. Are they ever gonna miss a lease? Not with, not, <laughs> doesn't look like it, does it? The thing is, is that they're wide open right now. They're moving the basketball, they're moving it inside and then outside, and they're getting wide open looks because of that good ball movement. A 20 to seven run right now for Washington. Sure makes you look good when you can knock down shots. You know what, when they're open, you've got a screen, there's good ball movement, like you're saying, everything that's meant to create a scoring opportunity is going Washington's way right now. This time it's Breanne Watson called for a foul down low. I thought we were gonna see another offensive foul against the Cougars as Watson it's getting a little extracurricular down there. And frustrating for Brianne Watson just off the bench. Two quick fouls, and she will most likely head into intermission playing just a few minutes in this first half.
First minutes we've seen from Danny Montgomery with the ball right now, the freshman. Top of the key, three will not fall for Jones, and it's the Huskies on the run again. There's Craddock, can she make it three for three? Just short, O'Hara tries to save it to no avail. Tune in tonight at 10 for FSN Live. We'll have complete coverage of both Apple Cups hooped game, of course, this game, and the men play today as well. Gonzaga with a showdown with San Francisco. Plus, we'll hear from a pair of Sonics shooting for all-star glory in the three-point contest. That's tonight at 10 on FSN Live. Huskies create another opportunity to get a turnover from Washington State, but then turn it right back over to the Kooks. Shot clock under 10, feed down low to the other senior on the roster, Emma Yonaby. There have been a lot of fouls called in this game. It doesn't seem like it's being played that physically, but it's sure being called that way, Elise. Well, I think the Washington State right now it seems to be pressing a little bit, trying to get physical down low. That's how they're going to win this game, is to win the battle of the boards, to be more physical down low. And right now, the referees are not letting them really play that style of game. They're calling this game tight. And so Washington State's going to have to adjust. The only problem is Washington, a much quicker team than Washington State. They don't want to push the tempo. They just have to continue to plug away and play physical without fouling if they can figure out where that line is today with the officials. What a feed. Kayla Burt leads the Huskies in assists. Sharik Raddick open down low. Make that now 11 assists on 13 made field goals for Washington. No question, that kind of ball movement, you are gonna score a lot of baskets and look really good. Yonaby with a little hook shot. Her teammate Kate Ben says about Yonaby's hook, it's a Swedish original. She'd love to replicate it, but she just can't. Yonaby's got a trademark on that shot. Well, Yonaby out of Sweden, and she's going to return actually over to Europe. This is her senior year. She's going to go play professionally in Spain following this. So that would be a lot of fun to go over, play professional basketball in Spain. From the corner, the three-pointer will not fall for Scales. Huskies on the run again. Craddock open baseline for three. You got it. She is in double digits already. Sheree Craddock, three threes. She's got 11 points. She saw her cousin, Nate Robinson, today play well against the Cougars as they, the Huskies get a win, and she's saying, I can get one. The two cousins, her uncle, of course, Jacques Robinson, the former running back here at Washington. Runs in the family. Florence denied on the feed across the paint. A 20 point ball game and we still have about seven minutes left in this first half. It's just unraveled quickly, unfortunately, for Washington State. How can they get back in it right now? You think okay. transition game or just be patient? I think they have to be patient. That's their style of game. They need better ball movement against this matchup zone and perfect dribble penetration there by Charmaine Jones. That's what you have to do. Move the basketball, wait for an opening, and then attack. Attack she did, but it's still a big lead for Washington with six and a half minutes left in the first half. They're taking care of the basketball, and they are sharing the basketballs. We get a rear angle look. Burt threads it in for Craddock. 11 points already off the bench. And Cherie just really playing well in spurts this season when she has not been injured or has not been ill. She's played some huge minutes for Washington. You mentioned one of the top 10 three-point shooters in this conference and really a fine for June Doherty. She came in here on a track scholarship out of the state of California, came up here, her cousin Nate Robinson talked to him. She felt comfortable coming up here where she knew someone and uh, was an outstanding track and field athlete, but came up, walked on at the University of Washington, and June Doherty sure is happy about that. Yeah, 11 points from a walk-on. You gotta be kidding me, that's sweet. March Madness is coming to Seattle when the University of Washington hosts the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournaments. First and second rounds, March 19th and 21st. Get your tickets at GoHuskies.com. The way Washington's playing right now, you never know. They could punch their own ticket. There is still an automatic invitation on the line. The winner of the Pac-10 tournament 
Now granted, Stanford looks to be the favorite, winning their fifth straight conference crown earlier this week, Elise, but that's the great thing about the conference tournament. It's a little carrot that every coach can dangle in front of their teams, including these two teams, the Huskies and the Cougars. Washington Huskies have won five of their last eight games. Everything is finally clicking. Um, well, our running game, and that's definitely what um, was our focus in the beginning of the season. And then towards the middle of the season, we kind of have shied away from that. And so I think um, the, the past couple weekends, we've been getting back into our running game slowly, and I think it's working for us. So I think that's been, been the huge key, is just getting into our running game. Well, they've certainly been running in this one, Elise. Well, Absolutely, and that's why they have the huge lead today over their rival, the Cougars. Cameo Hicks last weekend, 14 points and nine boards per game was her average, really playing well. She's at her best when this team can move up tempo and really run. Ariana Scales with her first basket of the game, a three. The Cougars try to be patient and whittle down this one-time 20-point lead for Washington. Bell, little baseline move. She's hammered by Moore. She'll head to the line. And Jill Bell, so difficult to stop once she catches the ball on the block. Sherry Merle said before the game, the plan against Bell was to get her off the block as far as they could, just keep pushing her out. And the patented move is that turnaround jump shot. And the thought there from Sherry Merle was the further we can push her out, hopefully the less accurate Jill Bell would be. So far in this game, Jill hasn't really exploded. Seven points, possibly eight here with the free throw. And it's been good enough as the Huskies with a big lead. Yeah, she's three of three from the floor, fouled on her fourth basket attempt. So she's definitely making her presence known. She really hasn't played very much in this first half. They started to bring in the reserves and the starters took a real rest on the bench. Yona B again making her presence felt. Offensive rebound in the putback. She's got four in very short minutes. Washington State's actually on a 9-3 run over the last two minutes, 40 seconds. I don't think there's any question in that timeout. Sherry Merle trying to get her team, possibly close this game to double digits before halftime, keep them in it. On the road, that's, that's really what you want, is for your team just to be close, hang around, and they've got some work to do. Down low, Emma Yonavi, she's doing some work, finding the basketball, tracking it, and no block out there from Washington, and Yonavi left wide open. Yonavi has eight games scoring in double digits this season. She came into the season with only four double-digit games in her career, so she's really improved her confidence this year, and Coach Merle said that was the key to getting her going. A little confidence can mean so much. Washington trying to be patient. He's a little of that ball movement that got them that 20 point lead. It's Bell to Hicks and Hicks now has six. And 13 assists on 15 field goals for Washington. It's a they, coach's dream. They are absolutely moving. This is the epitome, the definition of teamwork so far in this first half. Ben steps out for three. A little too much on that one. Yonaby and Florence fall down under Washington State's basket. And in the meantime, Cameo Hicks and crew running it down the floor. Furious pace right now. Coog slow it back down. Going back to that patient style, which has helped them chip away at this Huskies lead. Yonaby feeds it inside to Benz, who was fouled in the paint. Believe by Cameo Hicks. Yep, her first foul. And watching Kate Ben, she did exactly what you want her to do as a post player. She's down there asking for the ball. It's reversed, and she just pins Cameo Hicks, the smaller defender, exactly as you're taught. Good footwork there, and it earns her a trip to the foul line. We talked about that she's tops in the conference in rebounds, but she's also number one in defensive rebounds, sixth in offensive boards. She's seventh in the conference in minutes played, playing about 32 and a half minutes a game. And she's 16th in scoring 
She's contributing on so many levels for the Cougars, and as you'd expect from a big rebounding star like Kate Benz, she's got eight double-doubles this year. That leads the conference. Well, and she's really playing well. The Oregon native just grew up a few minutes from where Cherry Merle grew up, so the ties back there to the Portland, Oregon area. And her parents here today in attendance, cheering her on. Actually, the Cougars with a large contingent of fans sitting right behind their bench. Sherry Merle said that she's got about 40 friends and family here to cheer her on, just a two and a half hour drive away. Hey, LaBert can't hit from downtown. O'Neill saves it to Bell. They're gonna kick it out and reload. There's O'Neill now, just a little bit off. Tough rebound from Scales, pushing it up. No numbers for State. We'll see if they stay patient and diligent. What a feed. Oh, Kate Benz looking like a point guard. The lob down low to Yonaby. There's some teamwork from State. Well, no question, your post players, <laughs> they'll find if you're open and you're a post player in that high-low high, high low game, you're going to get the basketball. Sometimes, though, post players don't have that same touch, but Kate Benz, no problem. How about the touch from Jill Bell, the big post player for the Huskies, just steps up and drills like a 17-footer. Working it down low to Yona B again, and I think the Cougars have found their contributor this first half. She's got eight. And cutting this lead down now, 12 points. That's manageable for the Cougars. Is exactly what they want, a little shot, a little shot of confidence before they head into intermission. Burton Bell working a little two-man game. Yona B comes down with a rebound. No surprise there. She's been the spark plug for the Crimson and Gray this half. Scales open for the jumper. She drops it. And all of a sudden, the Cougars are finding a little bit of the offensive rhythm that was so lacking for basically the first 14 minutes of this ball game. And the ironic thing is, is they're pushing the tempo a little bit. It's not exactly helter-skelter for them, but they're getting up and down the floor and taking the first available shot. Cherie Craddock missing on the three. She has three in this first half for Washington. Another feed down low to Yonaby. Benz wide open, nobody sees her, but Ferguson spots Yonaby wide open, and she's got 10 first half points. Cougars on a 15 to four run. And they're just controlling the glass right now. The defensive board's down on the one end, and then that time, just a nice feed down low. Talk about teamwork. That was great teamwork. Rebound falls the way of Washington State again. O'Neal off on the three. The long shot often creates the long rebound. Kayla Burke trying to calm down the Cougs. Gets the steal opportunity and then gets fouled by Ferguson. Crimson and Gray on a little run. What was once a 20-point lead whittled down to eight. Come on back. Cougar senior Jessica Perry was not there for the beginning in the recruitment by Sherry Merle, but she loves what Coach Merle has done with Washington State's program. You know, every year is an improvement. Every game is an improvement. So um, we're bringing in players that are going to help us. And just coaching staff is great. Players are working together. So it's, it's going up, upside. So. Slowly but surely. The senior is finally seeing the light. Sharon Merle doesn't have a lot of wins to show for it, but boy, the margin of defeat shrinking for the Cougars. They've got 11 games this year, decided by eight points or less. They have been so close so often. And Jessica Perry, really a big reason for that. Playing well, one of the top assist makers in Washington State history, doing a good job running the team. Sharon Merle thinks she's one of the top five fastest point guards in this league. And uh, using that quickness to get in the lane, really helping the Cougars offense. A senior, she thinks she's going to uh, just send out as many resumes as she can. She wants to get into the sports management field. So good luck to her after this season. On the run, Maggie O'Hara. Very athletic shot. Catching it almost over her shoulder and still putting it in. Sweet little move. 
Danny Montgomery looks like she got hurt on the receiving end of that pass. We'll keep an eye on that. Meantime, Emily Florence says, uh, if nobody else is going to take care of the basketball, I will. Montgomery, the freshman for Washington State, limping off right now. We'll try to get some kind of a progress report on her situation when it becomes available. You can see the two ankle braces there. And what those ankle braces do, they don't prevent you from turning your ankle, they prevent your ankle from turning severely. So you still can have sprains and some damage done. It can't stop your ankle from moving, otherwise you couldn't run. Scales from the corner, lighting it up with the three. She's got eight now. This is a player who knows how to score. She had 42 points once in a high school game, also had 42 points once in a junior college game with Cowley County Community College. So get her in a rhythm and look out. Sheree Craddock has slowed down a little bit from her original furious scoring pace. Scales feeds it to Jones. Blocked, but also fouled by Maggie O'Hara. Crowd doesn't like the call. I don't think they saw the other hand. O'Hara's top hand was blocking, but I think there was a little something going on with the other hand, and that's why Jones is at the line. And I think that the aggressor is usually the one that gets the call, and that time Washington State pushing it right down, good dribble penetration, not giving up on the play, and eventually getting the call. Washington State again cuts Washington's lead to single digits. Coming up at the half, we'll take a look at the scores around the Pac-10 as this was a huge weekend for the Pac-10 conference standings. Kayla Burt's turnaround continues. And the Cougars are perfect from the charity stripe today. Six of six as a team. O'Neal open for three with time winding down in the half. Perry's got a second left. She launches the shot. Oh, my. Usually don't see those that close. Kayla Burton hit a half quarter at one point earlier this season. But it's the Huskies right now with a 43-35 lead over their in-state rivals from the Palouse. The three-point shot friendly for Washington. They're shooting 54.5% holding on to a lead. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena as these two teams get ready for the second half, the in-state rivalry. It's the Huskies with an eight-point advantage. It was once a 20-point lead for Washington. They came out firing out of the gates, had a 70% shooting percentage at one point, and then the Cougars got back into it behind the play of reserve Emma Yonaby. Well, Emma Yonaby and hitting the glass, they were just fantastic in the first half. Out rebounding the dogs by eight, and that's what kept them in this game. Their post players really bringing it in the first half after that initial onslaught by Washington from the outside. Sharik Raddick was three of five from downtown in the first half. She's got 11 to lead the Huskies charge. Beautiful feed there from Kayla Burt. They have been sharing and caring for the basketball. 15 assists for the Huskies compared to only four turnovers. And that's why they have the lead despite being out rebounded. We'll be back for the second half next. Welcome back. Start of the second half. Washington with a 43-35 lead over their Apple Cup rivals, Washington State. It is the Huskies who control the ball in the second half as State controlled the tip in the first half. The 
this was once a 20 point lead for Washington. So offensively, what are they trying to do in this second half, Elise? Just kind of work their way around, get back to the ball movement, what worked so well in the first half? Well, they got tremendous ball movement after they started fast breaking. The transition was really what blew this game open for Washington. If they can run, they can score. And I think when Washington State started controlling the rebounds, Washington couldn't get out and run. So they want to continue, Washington does, to try to hit the glass, get the board, and run. Kate Benz is working really hard right now. Number 32, the star for Washington State, working really hard on the blocks, trying to post up the people defending her. And indeed, Kristen O'Neill called for her first foul of the game. A little too aggressive trying to keep Benz off the blocks. Washington State showing some trademark patience. They do it with defense, in a very methodical half-court set. Of course, the men's team, run by legendary coach Dick Bennett, one of the best in the nation at slowing it down and grinding it out. Ben's working on Bell. One too many steps. She lost a handle and then lost her control in the key. Taking a look at the first half stats, you said the rebounds really stand out for you, Elise. Well, I think the rebounds were what kept Washington State in that game, down by 20. That's how they got back in this game. The other thing, 15 assists for Washington, just four turnovers. That's an outstanding ratio. Four turnovers for Washington compared to 13 for Washington State, 12 for Washington State. They have one in this half. And don't forget, Washington riding a 19-game winning streak versus the Cougars. 1995 was the last time that Washington State won, and they haven't won here in Seattle since 93. That is a long time, and those streaks are eventually meant to be broken. Who knows if it will be today or in their next meeting or the one after that, but these Cougs have a newfound tenacity. They have some maturity to go with a little bit of confidence. Still an eight-point game. Hicks calling for it down low. Nobody saw her. Jill Bell gets an open look. Tough offensive rebound from Kristen O'Neill, demonstrating why UW is second in the Pac-10 in offensive boards. They never quit, and Kayla Burt gets her first basket of the game, and she's heading to the line for the three-point play. And how about Kayla with the broken nose, displaced so badly that she could not get it in place here at the arena last weekend. She had to wait until Monday to get her nose reset. Just taking it right into the paint, not minding the contact, going right through it for a three-point opportunity. Yeah, and when they say reset, what they mean is they have to re-break the nose and then place it into position. So I can't imagine how excruciatingly painful that would be. Well, it doesn't sound like a lot of fun. You see no. the, the tape over her nose. It's actually a little mini cast over her nose underneath that mask. Who is that masked woman? The feed to Florence, the extra pass to Burt, stripped by Jones, but she kicks it out to O'Neal. Mad flurry, Washington controls the ball. Florence drives, and instead of dishing, Gets the open layup, but she was at a bad angle to the basket. Couldn't get it to fall. Benz, deep, no go. And then Bell trips over to Benz. Both players down on the floor under the Cougars basket. We will take a look at what happened. Meantime, on the other end, there was a travel by Washington. Benz, it looks like she's got, maybe she lost her wind, perhaps. Well, you just hope that she took a shot to the stomach and that she's having a hard time breathing because she went down in a heap. You just see her get tangled right here. Jill Bell. I think Bell Kate landed Benz. on her. Yes, yeah. Kate Benz looked like she landed really hard right on the floor and just knocked the wind out of her. Jill Bell holding that right ankle. And June Doherty leaving her in this game. I think a lot of times it's better to leave players in the game when they twist something and let them just work, work it, it out, out <laughs> rather than sit them down and have them tighten it up. As Benz is on the bench to get her breath back, Jones for three from the top of the key. It's an eight point game again. Cougars haven't been able to drop it any closer than eight, but they have tried mightily. And a good battle down low. Jill Bell, Keisha Moore down on the block. Keisha Moore trying to push Bell out. Jill Bell holding her ground and earning the foul. 
Cameo Hicks for three. Very patient shot selection from downtown for Hicks, who puts on a little dribbling clinic and gets fouled by Jones. Little through the legs, little crossover, little through the legs. Draws the contact. Washington State are the comeback kids. They've overcome at least an eight point deficit to take the lead in nine different games. Down 20 at one point in this game and now they are again down by double digits thanks to the J from Jill Bell. She now has double figure scoring in six of the last eight games with 11 on the board today. And Washington continues in that matchup zone. Caused problems in stretches. This time it's Hicks fouling Jones way up at the top of the key. Another little reach in, culprit. Her third foul. And a bit of a concern for June Doherty in the fact that Dominique Banks, usually starting as the three, is on the bench with a concussion. She suffered in practice this week banged heads with Maggie O'Hara, so Dominic Banks is not playing in this game, which takes somebody out of your lineup, uh, averaging nearly double figures. So June Doherty with Cameo Hicks with her third foul will have to sit, and now comes players who aren't used to playing a lot of minutes. Brian Watson and Sharif Craddock in the game right now, along with Kayla Burt, Emily Florence, and Jill Bell. Offensive rebound for the Cougs falls to Yonaby, but she can't get the shot to drop. Huskies on the run. Burt way downtown to Watson to Bell. Oh, Emily Florence at five foot five. She wishes, that's in her sneakers, in the air for the putback. What an athletic shot. And I just think that fires up this crowd. When oh, you yeah. see some, the smallest player on the court by far going in amongst the trees and finishing. Following, following that, you've got the firing up of the Cougs crowd. Ariana Scales in and out and in on the three. She's got 11. And Scales really played well so far in this game. Lighten it up like she, like she can. She's proven that throughout her career she can score. Just hasn't done it consistently yet at the Pac-10 level. Watson, a little fake move trying to draw her defender one way and then just turns around and cans it. And Brianne Watson, an excellent athlete as well, out of Vancouver, Canada. One of the best high jumpers in the nation when she was in high school. Brianne's dad, Brent, actually played basketball for Washington State back in the 60s. And it's today Watson trying to burn Washington State as the Huskies look to make it 20 in a row against their in-state rivals. Emily Florence, a little spark plug. Huskies with a double-digit lead. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena. It's Washington with a 54-43 lead over Washington State. This one's been back and forth. Back in the day, the Huskies had a 20-point edge. And way back in the day, one of the current Husky sisters used to play, Elise. That's Kelly O'Neill. Well, Kelly O'Neill back in the day, big time scorer here at Washington, rebounder. She was a true power forward, her sister. Playing the power forward this year, but more of a point guard. Both had tremendous success at Meadowdale High School under Karen Blair, who's here in the crowd today. And Kelly O'Neill with the welcome addition. Just had a little baby about four weeks ago. A little girl named McKinley. You see your dad there. There's the baby. Holding on to little McKinley and her mom. Happy birthday to Kristen and Kelly's mom today. They wanted to send a shout out to Mrs. O'Neill, Tina O'Neill. It's all in the family in Husky Land. The first basketball game for McKinley. Now McKinley Daly. First Apple Cup. If you're going to go to a first game, why not go to the game against your in-state rivals? Watson, open baseline, shoots over Benz. She's got eight. Four of four from the field is Brianne Watson. 
And Brianne got a little piece of that shot from Scales. And then a foul called under the basket. On Kayla Burton. And Washington on the offensive end, starting to pull away again, up by 13. Brianne Watson, that power forward. The mismatch, she goes outside, about 16 feet outside the paint, and knocks that jump shot down. There's not a lot of power forwards that want to go all the way out there to get a hand in her face. Both teams have hit five threes in the game. Cougars might want to start launching to try to cut into that 13-point lead by the Huskies. Instead, Charmaine Jones takes it to the hoop, and she will head to the free throw line. Nice to see as well, Kate Benz back in the lineup, able to return after seemingly taking a shot to the gut while falling to the ground. Emily Florence committed that foul, her second personal. This is the last person you want to send to the line. Charmaine Jones, 10th in the pack in free throw percentage, almost 75%. Tickets are on sale now for the 2005 State Farm Pac-10 Women's Basketball Tournament. That's March 4th through 7th at San Jose. For ticket information, visit GoHuskies.com. The teams compete for that automatic invitation to the NCAA championship. And I tell you what, it might be the best Pac-10 tournament in the league's history. Stanford far and away right now, dropping up the title, but there's five other teams that are all vying for that second place in the conference. Brianne Watson with the put back. She now has 10 double digit scoring for her. She's got double digit scoring in seven of her last nine games. From the corner, Stephanie Singer a little bit long. Benz with the rebound off of Florence's head. There's Benz again, fighting Florence for the board. Florence actually tied a career high with six rebounds in Pullman the last time these two teams met. Kate Benz is just taking She's getting clobbered, yeah. Then, this is not a new thing. Kate Benz at six foot one, asked to play the center for Washington State for a lot of minutes on the floor, and she just gets beaten up because she's so physical and relentless. She just she just keeps going or to the boards no matter what, and that's through a lot of elbows and hips and a lot of contact. Well, and she's starting to get frustrated because she's pinning her defenders. She's getting good position, and people just aren't getting her the ball. Emma Yonaby bravely tries to dare where no Cougar is going. Gets knocked out of bounds by Nicole Castro, and you just see that look of pain frustration right now on Ben's face. The only player to start every game for Washington State this season. Meantime, Ariana Scales says, well, if the inside game's not working, I'll keep throwing it up from the outside. She's got 13. Still a 12-point edge for the Huskies as Watson will head to the free throw line. She scored the last six points for the Huskies. And Brianne Watson having to take a seat for a whole lot of minutes in the first half after picking up her second foul. Making the most of her minutes here in the second half. Really playing well. Ten points. And she's come on as of late. Double figures now in seven of her last nine games. It's the first of her two free throws. Make it a dozen for Watson. 12 points, five of five from the field and two of two from the strike. Washington's lead built to 14. Cougars cut it to eight on several occasions, but that seemed to be the magic number. Comfortable enough cushion for the Huskies to build back the lead into double-digit territory. Emily Florence will take a seat for Washington. Kristen O'Neill checks back in. Adrienne Ferguson, number 24 for Washington State, has been pretty quiet in this game considering she averages 10 points a game. Kristen O'Neill fouls Emma Yonaby at the top. Second personal foul for O'Neill. Washington hanging on to its lead, building it to 14. We've got about 12 minutes left in the second half.
Welcome back to Bank of America Arena. Washington enjoying a 14-point lead right now over its in-state rivals, in part because of the second half play of Breanne Watson. She's got eight in this second half. She's been doing it down low, doing an off offensive rebounds. Very effective. Well, Breanne Watson doing a nice job, just hanging with this season. Started with a bit of a sophomore slump, got frustrated at a certain point in the season, but instead of allowing herself to kind of mope around, just continued to work, got in the gym, worked on her shooting, just worked her way out of a little bit of a slump and has played really well over the last two months of the season. A strong defense right now for the Huskies, not allowing any entry passes until that one. Emma Yonaby way off the mark. I think she was a little hounded by the D, or maybe the ball was tipped there. Hard to tell. They're shooting 50% in the second half. Big problem for Washington early in the season was a huge second half drop off. We talked to Cameo Hicks before the game, and she said the biggest difference in winning five of their last eight has been playing the full 40 minutes, Elise. And I think also playing the full 40 minutes defensively. Their matchup zone has really improved uh, since about two months ago when this team started playing better. June Doherty switched the lineup down at Oregon. They played well and lost. But since that time, they've won, la they've won five of their last eight games. Much more effective in the scoring. Washington getting 80 in four of its last five. Stephanie Singer gets her first basket of the game. The sophomore out of Eugene, played for Marist High School. Kate Benz fouls Brianne Watson before the shot. Injury report, in the first half we saw Danny Montgomery kind of get stopped receiving a pass. Looked like it might be a uh, injury problem for her. She's got her right shoe off. She's sitting on the bench, and earlier she was crying. High right ankle sprain is the diagnosis there, and those are so hard to heal. Meantime, even more injurious for Washington State, Kate Benz just went to the bench with her fourth personal foul. The Pac-10 leading rebounder sitting right now. She's got six boards in this game, six points four personal fouls, and we will take a time out. Huskies leading by a dozen with the Cougars' best player on the bench. Washington State has brought what was once a 20-point lead into a dirty dozen. They've got 12 points to make up to try to really get into this game. And every year in Cherry Merle's career, they've gotten a little bit closer, at least. Well, I think that that is showing, yes, this team definitely is improving. And her parents are here to prove it. Up from the Portland area, she went to St. Mary's High School, did Sherry Merle State Championship back in 1985. And her parents making the drive up I-5 to watch their daughter as she tries to turn Washington State into a Pac-10 contender. Spent some time coaching at George Fox College before a four-year stint at University of the Pacific. Now in her third season with Washington State. Maggie O'Hara goes to the basket on Keisha Moore, gets denied, and then Breanne Watson can't get a second effort to fall. Cougars on the run. Stephanie Singer to Moore, working it around, trying to look for the open shot. Kate Benz on the bench with those four fouls, and Emma Yonaby, nice second effort, almost had the ball robbed away from her. She's got 12 points. She was a big reason why the Cougars worked their way back into it in the first half. Cougars still getting beaten in the paint, though, in the battle. Cameo Hicks steps into the key. She's got 10 now. She's got at least double digits or at least 10 points in nine of her last 11 games. She has been such a force in Pac-10 conference play. 
And you look at this whole Washington squad, there is not a single senior on this roster and just three juniors. So this is a team with so much youth. Cameo Hicks, just a sophomore. And you can see that young underclassmen group really starting to improve. Washington State trying to find an answer to the Huskies down low. And they get one in Emma Yonavi, the senior. Speaking of seniors, just two seniors for Washington State. So Sherry Merle has a young squad herself. And she's trying to mold. And she said in building this Washington State program, she thinks year four is really the year that she targeted as being a breakout year. She thinks they've shown signs this year. You see the margin of victory that uh, we showed just a few moments ago. Eight point margin of victory compared to 22 points when Sherry Merle arrived. And she thinks that next year, some of these close losses will turn into victories for her team. Yona be 16th in the Pac-10 Conference in rebounding, enjoying her ninth double-digit effort. But what she really wants to see, she's a senior too, she wants to see her Cougars snap this long skid in the series with the Huskies. Ferguson from downtown for three, her first three of the game. She leads the team, shooting 34.6% from downtown. Ferguson's offense has been a little bit quiet. Just five points from a player that averages 10 a game. We'll see if she can continue to find her stroke in the second half of the second half. Cameo Hicks fouled on the perimeter by Ariana Scales. And Stephanie Singer delivering the basketball to Ferguson when she is ready. Nice assist there, just coming off the screen for Ferguson. She gets her feet set, and that's what shooters do. They find the bottom of the net. Ferguson sixth in the conference in threes per game. She averages 1.6 per game. So we might see her take a couple more shots from out there. Kayla Burt loses a handle. Still Washington's ball. I think that mask is starting to aggravate her now. You know it's got to fog up. That's got to drive you crazy. Well, it is made to fit her exact face. So it is so much better than the one that she was dealing with in practice this week. So. She kind of feels like after going through that mask that this one doesn't really bother her at all compared to the old one. Cougars trying to score off of another Huskies miss. Patient and deliberate. We have a foul called down low. It looks like Brianne Watson is getting whistled and trying to discuss it with the officials. Watson's third personal release, as you mentioned. She was hitting a rhythm in the first half, got sat down as soon, as soon as she had her second personal, but right now, kind of a thin bench for June Doherty. Dominique Banks is out, Cameo Hicks dealing with three fouls, so a little bit of foul trouble right now for the Huskies. Well, I think that's something that June Doherty is well prepared to handle. She's played a lot of kids all season long, sometimes 15 deep. In fact, last week versus the Oregon schools in the two blowouts, she had every single available player on her roster get into the game. And she had a lot of those players make some pretty significant contributions. Andrea Plouffe with a career high seven rebounds in the game against Oregon. She's only averaging six minutes a game, but she making her minutes count. There's Plouffe now watching on this one. Keisha Moore, two for two from the line, and it's a nine-two run for the Cougars over the last two minutes, 40 seconds. And it's the Huskies on the run to respond. Jill Bell baseline over Singer. No, Yonaby hauls in the rebound. Let's see if Washington score. Washington State can score off of another Huskies miss. And Washington State hanging around. Somebody got a piece of that three from Ferguson. Kayla Burton running the show. One extra pass is sometimes all it takes. That's the third close shot in close range that the Huskies have missed in the last three possessions. And Sherry Merle sensing that her team needs a boost gets Kate Benz off the bench despite four fouls. She's at the scorer's table. Jill Bell with another piece of a three by Ferguson. She's trying to get him in there, but they're just not getting all the way to the basket. The Huskies defense trying to close the door when their offense is not being effective. It's 62-55 Washington, Cougar still clawing away.
Welcome back. Washington with its one-time 20-point lead in this game now dwindled to only seven. This is the closest the Cougars have cut it since they trailed by 20. And the Cougars just taking care of the basketball. 12 turnovers in the first half, just two through 13 minutes of play here in the second half. And when you don't turn the ball over, you take care of it. Guess what? You get shots at the hoop, and they've knocked those shots down. Uh, really shooting much better here in the second half of action. Kate Benz, number 32, the star for Washington State, back in the ball game despite the fact that she has four personal fouls. A gutsy move with seven minutes left in this game. Well, I think for Sharon Merle, she knows she has to have Kate Benz on the floor to get a win here. Stephanie Singer, top of the key for three, and it's a four-point game. Kayla Burt, the leader, responds for the Huskies, leads the team in scorings, assists, and steals. Finally hits a layup for the Huskies. And that took a lot of guts from Emily Florence. A lot of time when you feel the team closing in, you try to be conservative. Emily Florence, the point guard for Washington, number four, is pushing the ball ahead to Kayla Burt for the wide open lane. Well, she may be a freshman, but she is the floor general, and she knows that it was that running style, that aggressive, very confident brand of basketball that had the Huskies up by 20 in the first half. Shot clock violation for Washington State. Scales rushed in the shot, couldn't get it to hit the iron. The comeback kids overcame an 11 point deficit to beat Oregon State last week. They've overcome at least an eight point deficit to take the lead in nine games, four of those resulting in victories. Coach Merle said that that comeback last week against Oregon State to get the win really improved her team's confidence level in themselves. They hit a bunch of free throws down the stretch, that was key. Interesting to see if this game becomes a battle of free throws, who will prevail. Jill Bell and company trying to put it away. Put the nail in the coffin. Finish it, for heaven's sakes. And I don't think there's any question for Sherry Merle that these close victories, at some point you have to learn how to win. Washington, they've been learning how to win in the past few weeks. They just crushed Oregon and Oregon State here at Bank of America Arena last week. And Jill Bell trying to extend their winning streak to three straight games with just two left in the season before the Pac-10 tournament. They feel like they can play with everyone in this conference. Played well against Oregon this season. They're second in the Pac-10 right now. I think it's besides Stanford being the overwhelming favorite. After that, in the Pac-10 tournament, it is going to be some exciting games. I can't wait. That is going to be so fun to watch. Bell with 16 points. She opened the game. Perfect from the field, now six of 10 from the floor. Cougars with six minutes left on the clock, don't wanna rush it too much. Ariana Scales continues to just drop them from three point range. She is four of seven from downtown, 16 leads the way for the Cougar scoring. And at some point you wonder if Washington will get tight. A 19 game winning streak versus Washington State on the line here tonight. I don't think they're going to get tight when you've got players like Jill Bell and Kayla Bird out there to show the younger players, hey, a little confidence, a little savvy. This is our home court. We are not going to finish under 500 on our home court this season. That's what's on the line today for the Huskies. We haven't even talked about that. Well, seven and seven coming in today, and there's no question that that is a big deal to Washington, who is treated to a a wonderful fan base here at the University of Washington, leading the Pac-10 in attendance last year, third this year. And Jill Bell trying to keep that winning streak alive for the dogs. Another jump shot for Bell, who now has 15 points, the exact number she had against the Cougars in a win over on the Palouse earlier this season. Huskies have never lost more than five home games in a season. They've done that this year. As you mentioned, seven and seven. They have never finished less than 500 at home. There's a lot of pride at stake when you're talking about both your home court and your arch rivals. Scales out, Keisha Moore there to try to board it. Off her hands, Washington ball. To the story of this game, the Huskies use their transition basketball to open up a very fluid, comfortable half-court offense in the first half, led by as many as 20 points. Little by little, the Cougars have tried to drop them down off that peg. They've brought it as close as five. 
Kristen O'Neill off the mark. See if the Cougars can cut back into that lead. They've consistently kept it more in single digits in the second half. Bell fouls more. I think that a coach would call that a good foul, wouldn't you? Absolutely, Keisha Moore, good position down on the block. And Washington State is taking care of the basketball. Very few turnovers here in the second half. And they've gotten the ball down low. It's amazing, just three turnovers here through 16 minutes of play for Washington State after 12 in the first half. And it just means they're able to get it to their big scores down low. Taking care of the basketball is so important, especially against Washington, which has forced more turnovers than it has committed in 20 of its 25 games. Tune in Thursday for a pair of Pac-10 men's matchups. 10th ranked Arizona trying to avenge an earlier loss against Washington State. That an embarrassment for the Wildcats, beaten by the Cougars in the desert. Arizona State then gets a rematch with 15th ranked Washington. The action tips off at 5.30 on FSN Thursday. Back to a five-point ball game. Huskies still with the advantage. They've controlled it a lot of the game. Cougars force a turnover from Washington. They're on the run. Jill Bell, the athlete, steps in, long arms, long stride, takes care of the ball. Bell in and out. You know, Elise, I can't talk enough. You and I did a lot of Huskies games this year, and I think we have seen this Washington team mature so much over the course of one season to see the difference in the way that they're playing in these late game situations. They're they look more patient, they look more focused, they look more poised. We're gonna have to be careful today, though, because Washington State, as close as they've been all game, three, three points. points. The last time it was this close was 2-0. <laughs> 25 seconds into the game. I tell you what, Washington State with a ton of confidence right now. You can just feel it. Stephanie Singer called for the travel before she dished it off there, and that could have been a huge momentum breaker for the Cougars. Or will it be? Maybe that will be what pushes them over the edge. A little frustration, a little fury. Come on back. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena from blowout to a close one. That's what we've seen develop here in Seattle on this beautiful Saturday evening. Three scores and double digits for Washington State led by Ariana Scales, 16. Washington with several players in double digits, four to be precise, led by Jill Bell, who's taking a breather. Three-point ball game. Emily Florence loses a handle. Washington State gets the ball. And Emily Florence just trying to dribble through that trapping pressure from Washington State. A unique look for the Cougars who don't tend to pressure on the ball in the backcourt. Emily Florence just can't control it. Ball goes out of bounds, and the Cougars with a chance to tie with a three-point shot. The closest they've been since it was 2-0, 25 seconds into the game, and Kayla Burt called for the foul, her third, out on the perimeter. And a double bonus situation for the Cougars who will head to the free throw line for two foul shots on every single foul to end this game. I tell you what, Washington State, you can just feel the momentum on their favor right now, down by 20 points in this game. Riding a 19 game losing streak to the Huskies. 10 years of losing, sitting there with a chance here in Seattle to pull out a win. This would be monumentous for the Washington State program. Kate Benz misses the first of her two free throws. She's probably kill killing herself over that one right now. This is a player who leads the team 83% from the charity stripe, and it is a two-point game. And Kate Benz, an absolute perfectionist. Sherry Merle actually talking before the game, so organized that she once wrote out a resume as an eight-year-old to have her dog sitting service. So she's somebody <laughs> that is organized, a perfectionist. Driven. <laughs> nothing less than the best. 
Maggie O'Hara down low, working on more. Not there, but Brianne Watson is the putback and one. And that will be the fifth personal foul on Kate Benz. That could be the fatal blow for this Cougar comeback. Maggie O'Hara down low and Brianne Watson right place, right time. Very little contact from Kate Benz. That is really frustrating for her. Fouling out with nine points on the day, and she is the heart and soul of this Washington State team. And that's the kind of thing that immediately changes the outcome of a game. Kate Benz heading to the bench. Washington State down by four. They're going to have to do it without their best player if they're going to get it done here in Seattle. Nine points and eight rebounds for the conference rebounding leader who had a .4 rebound per game average edge over Oregon's Catherine Craveld. Craveld had 10 boards in a win against Arizona today, so it is going to be a close battle down the stretch for Benz trying to become the Cougars' first ever rebounding title queen. Brianne Watson makes good on the three-point play. She now has 15 points. That is a season high for her. Huskies have built their lead back to five, about two and a half minutes to play. Scales from way downtown cuts into the lead. Again, she's got 19. That is a season high for her. And you see Kate Benz up off the bench. She can't be in there anymore, but she can certainly cheer her team on. What a shot by Scales. That is clutch. That would kill the star of the team to not be able to be there in this rivalry battle down the stretch. It just must be eating up Benz inside. Well, she's gotten her team, played well enough to get her team in a position to win this game. There's not a lot of people that thought that was possible. 19 game win streak on the line here. And the Cougars right in it. Unbelievable. 71-69, couple of minutes left. We've got family support right now for Coach Merle. Plenty of Cougs fans drove over from the Palouse. Of course, there's a lot of Cougs fans that live here in Seattle. And Ariana Scale giving them something to cheer for. I tell you what, this shot is deep and right on line. A little dance after that one goes in. She's feeling good. That is deep, folks. And that's with the game on the line. Just two minutes and 17 seconds left to go in this game. The Cougars needed that shot desperately. Down by five. That'll put a smile on your face when you can knock down that shot against your rival. Scales, 19 points. That's her career high in Cougar Crimson. She's also got five threes. She's now scored in double figures seven times this season, her first season with Washington State. Meantime, Jill Bell, 16 points in this one. One point away from her career high. And Kristen O'Neill back in the, in the game has been very quiet offensively here today for the Dogs. Just one of seven, three points. And she's one of the leading scorers at over nine points per game. So they're going to need her to step it up here to get this victory for the Dogs. It's been a milestone night for some Cougars, for some Huskies. The feed inside to Keisha Moore. Robbed by Brianne Watson. Huskies basketball, under two minutes to play, four-point game. And June Doherty starting Kristen O'Neill at the power forward, returning her to the point guard at crunch time. Two minutes left, and she's putting the ball in her captain's hands. And her captain dribbles it off her foot and out of bounds. Hounded on that drive, lost a little handle, and it flew off the sneaker. Stomping away at Bank of America Arena for the last minute and a half of this game. Keisha Moore spots scales downtown. Six three of the game. It's a one point ball game. Oh, and she is hot. She is feeling it. Somebody has to figure it out and not leave her for anything down the stretch. Final minute 15. Know where Scales is because she is burning the dogs here in Heck Ed. Cougars threw up 32 threes in a game earlier this season against UCLA. They're 10 of 20. They didn't make 32 threes, they attempted 32 threes. Live by the three, die by the three. And right now, Ariana Scales has her Washington State Cougars living with it. Living comfortably, no, because they're still trailing by one. 
patiently looking for an open shot. Scales from the corner, off the mark to the delight of the Huskies fans. They don't need to foul. They're fouling. They don't need to foul. <laughs> They're fouling. Unbelievable. They don't need to foul. They're only down by one point. And then, you know, the Cougars got what they wanted here. A wide open three point shot for Ariana Scales, the possession before. And then after that, another Scales look that comes up short. Scales a little bit more pressured on that last look. Hicks was driving out, had her hand up. And Washington's best free throw shooter is at the line in double bonus. Well, we'll wait and see the outcome of this game, but I am sure Sherry Merle does not want her team to foul in that situation. 30 second shot clock, 41 seconds in the game. You only up by, or down by one, you can afford to play great defense and get the ball with a chance to win the game. But that's youth. You've got two sophomores Absolutely. on the floor. You've got two junior college transfers and you've got one senior. And Washington State has the ball after that little scramble on the loose ball. Dominique Banks, Stephanie Clark watching this one. Clark out with the flu, Banks with a concussion. They can't believe it. June Doherty incensed. Difference of about eight seconds between the shot clock and the game clock, and Coach Merle, who didn't have an opportunity to tell her team don't foul, finally calls a timeout to try to settle the situation. Let's take a look at that last call that went Washington State's way after this, after this Kayla Burke missed free throw. Who touched it last? That's the question. No, no question, that ball off the Cougars. The Cougars getting a break on the road. Jill Bell tipping this shot around, but right there. Yeah, I would say it was Adrian, Adrian Ferguson. <laughs> off the fingertips. Sometimes all it takes is a break to sway a series which has gone in the favor of the purple and gold for such a long time. Make that 19 in a row for the Huskies. And not only that, Kara, but 45 of the last 47 games, Washington has won in this series. 45 of 47. That All is the way a back to 1982, percentage. the Cougars have two wins in this series. And they have the ball with a chance to either tie it up or get the win if they can somehow find Ariana Scales once again for another three-point shot. Six on the night for Scales. Unbelievable night for her. She's got 22 points, a career high for her in a Coug uniform. As we mentioned, she's a scoring machine. She scored 42 in a junior college game. She scored 42 in a high school game with Topeka West High School out of Topeka, Kansas. Washington State has been in these close ones time and again. Two and six in games decided by six points or less. Two and nine in games decided by eight or less. To come up on the right end in this close one would be tremendous for this program. Keisha Moore dribbling around Brianne Watson and she loses control. It has been such a rough night for number 41. And I think the Husky fans just breathing an absolute sigh of relief. Breon Watson really gave the lane up to Keisha Moore, and she just couldn't hang on to the basketball. Only seven turnovers for the Cougs in the second half compared to 12 in the first half, and that one by far the most costly. Cameo Hicks fouled by Ferguson with 20 and a half seconds left on the clock. It's probably a pretty good person to foul in this situation. She's only about 66% from the charity strike this season. She will shoot two. No problem with the first one. Hicks now has 11. And that was pretty. That did not touch a single piece of the rim. All net there for Cameo Hicks, and the gym so quiet with this pressure situation. Well, they've seen the Huskies really give it up at the charity stripe in other games before. They're seven of nine in the second half from the charity stripe. Three-point game under 15 seconds left. Scales drives inside the key, which is perhaps a question mark. 
Down three, don't you need to shoot the three there, at least? Absolutely. In other words, if you get a wide open lane, you can absolutely take it to the hole and finish. Foul again and hope that they miss again at the free throw line. Uh, but the, you have to work the ball around a little bit to see if you can get a three point look. Again, the Washington State Cougars, this is their problem. They haven't figured out how to win close games yet. They're in all of these games, but they just haven't figured out how to win and the proper decisions with the game on the line. This is the big one for Breon Watson. She makes this a four point game and this game is over. Watson missed the first free throw. Kate Benz, the star for Washington State, can only watch and Sherry Merle definitely calls the timeout trying to ice number three, Breon Watson. Where's Jess Perry right now, the senior point guard for Washington State, at least? Well, I think Stephanie Singer has done an outstanding job here in the second half. And when she got inserted onto the floor, this team all of a sudden went on a large run. Singer really the opposite type of point guard from Jessica Perry, where she's one to get you into the offense, find the open person, probably has the best vision on this Cougar team, where Jess Perry's more of a penetrate and dish type of a point guard. And Sherry Merle just going with what's working, the sophomore out of Eugene, Oregon, and Stephanie Singer at that point guard spot. And the future, of course, for this program at the point, Stephanie Singer. Brianne Watson at the line, Washington State with a couple of shooters in the backcourt, hoping for a Watson miss here, down three, nine seconds left. Watson, money. She's got 16 tonight. That is a season high for her. Time winding down for the Cougs. Singer can't hit the layup. Watson can just wait, lock it up, and this one is in the books. The Huskies win in absolute heart attack fashion. 76-72, that's 20 in a row for Washington over their in-state rivals from Washington State. For at least Woodward and our entire crew, I'm Kara Capuano. Huskies get the win.